run through a principal components analysis on some acoustic data. Uh, a little bit about the data set that we're going to look at. Um, it's a collection of recordings from a species found in Southeast Asia, a small babbler species. They're little, mostly brown and gray understory birds. They make really pretty songs. Um, the one that we're looking at is called the mustached babbler. And we're going to look to see if there's variation in their song um, from the different locations where you can find them. So partic in particular, the song that you hear and find in Borneo and the song in Peninsular Malaysia. And so um, this is just so you can hear what the song sounds like. Here is an example. So there are variations on that song in terms of the pitch that you might hear the song happen, the number of notes, how fast the bird sings the song. And so we're looking to see if there are patterns that you can detect that separate the, the song that you find in those two locations. So here is the data set. And um, in the program Jump. And so we have a variety of measurements. Um, we got all of the sounds from Zeno Canto and then opened them up in, in a sound analysis software and selected the songs and took some measurements of the songs. And some of the information that we have here is the lowest frequency of the sound that, that, that's happening in the song, the highest frequency, the highest pitch in the song, this measurement called the center frequency, which is not the average or the median frequency. It's a little bit different. What it is, is the frequency that represents the pitch or the frequency um, in the middle of where the most of the volume of the song is happening. And so it's a little bit different than just the middle tone. The change in frequency from high to low. The center time of the song. So we have also um, the total time of the song from start to finish, but the center time is measured very similarly to center frequency in that it's looking at where the energy of the song is. And so the center time isn't just the center point, it's the center of the energy of the song. Okay, um, number of notes. So these are, you heard that do, 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 do. So we count the number of those individual notes in the song and then divide that by the change in time to get an idea of how fast the bird is singing the song. And so we'll, we're gonna use principal components analysis to see if we can find patterns in the data set. And in Jump, it's pretty straightforward. You use the Analyze menu and select Multivariate Methods, Principal Components. And um, in Principal Components Analysis, this is an exploratory analysis. And so we're really looking at a bunch of response variables and how they relate to one another. We're not making a prediction, we're looking for a pattern. And so the response variables that we're gonna enter into this um, analysis are all of these measurements that we took. You can add region. And so the region we have at the final column is either Borneo or Peninsular Malaysia. So the songs that were um, and analyzed were from either one of those two regions. We can add that in there if we want. And select OK and you get a, an analysis. And what you see is your sort of default screen is a plot, a scatter plot of the first and second principal component. And then this other plot that's representing how the different measurements are um, ordinating the, the points on the principal component one and two. You can see how the points scatter. And so points that tend to scatter in the upper right quadrant are scattering um, towards a, an end of the spectrum representing these variables frequency, the high frequency, the change in frequency in the center time of the song. And then in the lower left, we're looking at um, a spread that's more towards the low frequency um, the center frequency and the, and the speed of the song. Okay, so just so you understand how the points are scattering and what these graphs mean. And then you actually see component one and component two, and it's showing you the percent variation that's explained by each component. Okay, um, you can 
get some more information from this analysis, including the eigenvalues. And this can be very useful. Um, and the eigenvalues actually are presented here in the default analysis, but this, if you select eigenvalues, you can look to see what cumulative percentage in the, in the actual percentage that each principal component is explaining in terms of the variation in the data set. And so the first two principal components in this analysis are explaining a fair amount, more than 50% of the data in the data set. Um, you can also view the eigenvectors, okay? And this, the eigenvectors, you have principal component one through seven here. Um, we're gonna look at the first two or three and you can look to see how the um, different uh, measurements are weighting on those principal components. Um, with it looks like the low frequency and center frequency sort of weighting pretty heavily on the first principal component and high frequency and uh, change in frequency weighting fairly heavily on the second principal component. So you can sort of say something about how these points are spreading. You can also, you can do a lot of other things, but you can save your principal components to your data set, which can be very useful. I'm gonna save three principal components to the data set. And so when I go back and look at my data set, I see now that there are principal components added to that. And I can um, graph those principal components in um, a two-dimensional or three-dimensional scatter plot. I'm just gonna do a two-dimensional right now. And if I scroll down here in the menu, I can find my principal components and I'm just gonna plot principal component one principal component two. I don't really need this, this, this line here. Um, and you can actually overlay a variable like region here, if I would drag it up to overlay, and it will um, generate two different color points representing Borneo and Peninsular, Peninsular Malaysia. So that's really useful. And I can see that there is some overlap in the song traits along those principal components but I also see what I think to be some separation. Um, and you can also fit lines across the principal components. And you actually see that there does appear to be some difference in um, the distribution of these points for Borneo and Peninsular Malaysia. Um, really somewhat more specifically across the second principal component. You, um, this is a nice looking um, graph. You can actually add some, um, Statistics to the graph, if you would like, you can put an R squared value associated with these two. Um, and then you can actually draw an equation, an F test, these sorts of things um, for the lines. So if we look at that, you can see that um, for Borneo, we have a nice bit of data. For Peninsular Malaysia, not quite as much. But you could then run um, another kind of analysis to see how these lines might be differing. Um, and that would be, that's called a, a, a MANOVA, a multiple analysis of variance. So that's um, some of the graphing. If you wanted to run something like an, a, a multiple analysis of variance, you would actually go back to the analyze menu and select fit model. And you can actually select MANOVA as an analysis um, for um, your data set. And I'm just gonna select the first two principal components. There's my Y variables. And then region is my model. And I can run that analysis. And a multiple analysis of variance is a little different than a regular analysis of variance in that it's really looking at comparing two lines, lines represented from two populations. And um, you can do that here um, by comparing the response variables. I can sum the differences between the two lines or collect, gather a mean. Um, I'm gonna start with the sum and I'm gonna run that analysis. And it's gonna show me how these lines differ um, using a uh, multiple analysis of variance. And we can see that the lines are differing in their shape here. And so you can say something about that. And, so um, you can use this hypothesis testing type of statistic to say something about your principal components. If that seems a little more than you're ready for, 
you can actually simply do an analysis of variance um, on the first two principal components. You would do them one at a time with your principal component being your response and your region being your factor, or the, the thing that you're comparing, the x variable. And here we are doing a one-way analysis of variance on the data set across the first principal component. And there, you can see, it doesn't look like there's a lot of difference across that first principal component. And we see that with the spread of points. So you might do that on the second principal component. And you might even look at the third because it explained a fair amount of variation in the data set. But let's look at the second principal component. And, and run an analysis of variance on that. And you see more differentiation across that second principal component. And because you get the, the eigenvectors, you can look at how the, the sound variables are weighting on these components. You can say, okay, so it's these elements of the sound that are differing, differing between the Borneo and the peninsular Malaysia populations. And so you can start to see how the songs might actually be varying. This is within a single species, and this is a bird that learns its song. So um, finding differences that are regional in the acoustic um, qualities of the sound is somewhat interesting. It suggests that there's something, there might be some barrier to the birds, even though they're learning their so songs, there might be dialects um, developing in these different regions because there's, there's less crossover between, you don't get a lot of dispersal for these birds um, between Peninsular Malaysia and Borneo at the moment. So that's um, that's a principal components analysis associated with some different kinds of hypothesis testing that you can do on a complex data set.